Welcome to another Parables of the Bible sermon. This is the number 10, sermon number 10 of the Parables of the Bible. We were in the Old Testament only. We're talking about parables of judgment. The miracles are parables in action, parables of divine retribution for the sins of a godless nation. Not that they didn't have plenty of gods, but they didn't have the right gods. We have the ten plagues of Egypt, which were actually the eleven plagues of Egypt. One plague was a plague between God, or not a plague, but a, a, a show of power between God and Satan. The very first one was when Aaron went in to, uh, with Moses. God said, I will make uh, Moses a god to you and Aaron a prophet to you people. And he went in there and he took his rod, which is a symbol of authority. This is the rod of God, which I've said in the other classes. Aaron threw that rod down before Pharaoh, and it, be it miraculously became a dragon. A tanin, not a nahash. A tanin, a dragon. And of course, Janus and Jambres, which were Balaam's sons, they were the magicians of Egypt, the book of Jasher tells us, and 2 Timothy 3 and 8 tells us who they were. They throw their rods of authority down by satanic powers. Here we have a contest between God and Satan. Now God gives Satan uh, two to one odds here. And God still comes out. God's Leviathan, his supernatural creature, this dragon, this fire-breathing, smoking dragon, swallows up Satan's powerful dragons. Satan created, out of those rods, he created Leviathans of the dark side. He created the Leviathans of the dark side out of those rods. Those rods did not become serpents. Those rods became dragons. But God's dragon, God's Leviathan, overcame Satan's Leviathan. Then we go down and God begins to uh, have contests. Now he first of all said he's stronger than Satan. All of, all of the powers of all of these false gods uh, Satan inspired all of this, and now he's going to take on one god at a time. The first thing he did was take on the Nile River in Exodus 7, 14 through 25. Uh, Num, the guardian of the river source, Hopi, the spirit of the Nile, Osiris, the Nile was his bloodstream, and this is duplicated by the Egyptians. The rods turning into dragons was duplicated by the magicians. Now we have this duplicated by the magicians and it occurs in Goshen where Israelites lived also. There's dead fish, which was one of their gods also, Dog, or Dagon, as it was in two other nations. And there was a putrid smell from the Nile god. Then there was the frogs, the Hasyafardikia. The frog goddess, Hopi and Hect, uh, both related to fertility. And this was also duplicated by the Egyptians. And it occurs in Goshen where the Israelites lived also. Then we have the plague, not of lice. This is not a plague of lice, but this is a plague of biting insects, is what they were, biting insects. Gnats. And they came, and the word... Uh, uh, Kamin, Kimin, means to swarm, to mix. And Zeb was the earth god of Egypt. This is not duplicated by the Egyptians. It occurs in Goshen where the Israelites lived also and attributed to the finger of God by the Egyptians, the magicians. Now, in the New Testament, Jesus told the Pharisees and the scribes, and they knew this story. They said, he said, if I do all these miracles by the finger of God, the kingdom of God has come unto you in the book of Luke. And he used this very term, which the, Egyptian, or which the Jews were very, very familiar with. And now we have the real flies. The real flies, Exodus 8, 20 through 32. The real flies, these are dog flies. 
These are biting flies. The Utashit, the fly god of Egypt and also uh, Beelzebub. Now, God makes a separation between the Egyptians and the Israelites at this point. No more plagues will come upon the Israelites. Remember, there are nine penal plagues, nine penal plagues. One, the first miracle was to show that God is more powerful than Lucifer and Satan. And the rest of these, we have three sets of threes, three sets. And all of the time that God does not destroy these people is a time of mercy, is a period of grace. We know that all the, all the Israelites did not leave. And some that left did not believe. We know that some of the Egyptians left. And some of those did not believe. But all of this period of time, which goes anywhere from a minimum of four months to maybe nine months, which is a very realistic, maybe even 12 months, as the Mishnah and the Talmud say. There are nine calls to repentance. Nine calls to repentance. And then finally, there is the, these are what you call penal miracles or penal plagues. And finally, there is the capital punishment. Capital punishment, which was the last plague, which was the death of the firstborn. The flies. Now we have a disease on the cattle, anthrax. Anthrax hits the land. Many scientists say, well, all of these plagues, one led into the another because this one produced this, this one produced this one, this one produced this one. I might say this, that God uses the natural phenomena very time, many times magnified because the people are familiar with locusts. They were familiar with dog flies. They were familiar with frogs, but not to this extent. Now, Ptah, Hathor, Menevis and Ammon, they were the Egyptians' gods associated with bulls and cows. It affects their property, their property. These are what, this is what you call portable property. The death of their livestock. God destroys this livestock. This was their moving machines. It was their John Deere tractors. These animals were. The camels. The horses were implements of war. The cattle were that which broke the ground. The donkeys and the camels were those things which shipped. The, the camels are called the ships of the, of the sea, of the, the ships of the desert. He strikes them all with anthrax. They have great loss of property in this plague number five. Plague number six, the second set of threes. We have boils which is staph infection, Exodus 9, 18 through 12. We have Shikmahet, Serapis, and Imhotep. The Sikhamet was the goddess of the epidemics, the goddess of epidemics. And then we have Serapis and Imhotep, they're gods of healing. Now, man and beast is affected with anthrax. And is a great death, a great death in the land. Ababulf is the Hebrew word, Ababulf. And it's ulcers and boils and staph infection. It affects physical bodies. Pharaoh's magicians could not stand or appear in the court before Moses and Aaron. God is proving that he is powerful over all things. Now we have the third set of miracles, miracles of judgment, penal miracles, penal plagues. We have the hail. Now the uh, Nut, the Egyptian sky goddess, Nut, the Egyptian sky goddess. And by the way, the word hail there, Barad, means to make cold. We have Isis and Zeth, the Egyptian agriculture deities. And we have Shu, the Egyptian god of the atmosphere. All of these gods have been overcome now. All is Egypt uh, had plenty of gods, but they didn't have the god of heaven. This historically is is uh, actual historical account. 
Pharaoh confesses his sin but changes his mind afterwards. This is what we call shallow repentance. Shallow repentance. And now, where we start now in the 10th chapter of the book of, of Exodus, we have a Shemot. Now we have locust. We have Aravah. Aravah. And that word means to, uh, it means the burner of the land, the burner of the plains. And it means to devastate. To devastate. Now, Serapia was the Egyptian deity and protector from locust. Historical, or that, not that, but uh, Pharaoh offers a compromise during this plague. And the compromise is rejected by Jehovah God. And Pharaoh again confesses his sin, very shallow, shallow confession of sin. These akrita polain is what it says in the, in the Septuagint. The Greek word is akrita. Akrita means those things which walk on tiptoes, these bugs. And it says akritas polain, akritas much. These are obey. Exodus 10 and verse 1. It starts out, and I'll read it in Hebrew for just a moment. Wayomer Hathabar El Moshe Lubu. And he said and kept on saying Jehovah unto Moshe, Moses, You go unto Pharaoh, because I have made strong his heart, the heart of him, and his slaves. Now God, I quoted last class, the same sons that son, the same sun, S-U-N, that softens the wax, hardens the clay. Now Pharaoh, for seven plagues, hardened his own heart. And he had shallow repentance because he was in so much trouble and lost so much money. But now God is going to be, do the finish the job on him. In order that, my placing signs these, these in the midst for the purpose of that you may instruct or recount in the ears of your sons. They're going to hear this story forever. This is the story of Israel. The Exodus is the story of Israel. They'll have this, they'll have this Hasador or this Passover over and over again for thousands of times. And you'll tell your sons and the sons of your sons what I have wrought, what I have been busy doing, what I have been busy vexing in Egypt, and my miracles and signs, which I have placed among them, and that you may know, that Israel may know, number one, Israel is learning lessons here. Number two, that Egypt will understand that God is the God of heaven. He's the God of the earth. And he's the God of Can the land of Canaan, Ha-Kananin, the land of Canaan, and the land of Egypt, or Mitzrayim also. He's the God of the whole world, which I have placed among them. And you may know that I am Jehovah. I am Jehovah. Ki an, ani hadavar, I am Jehovah. By the word, that word hadavar there, uh, they Jews did not use the name Jehovah at all. They did not speak it. And the name Jehovah is an imagination. It's an it's a, uh, invention. We don't know how to say that name. We just refer to him as Jehovah. And then he said, and he went in Moses and Aaron unto Pharaoh. The name Pharaoh remains means what, Marilyn? Do you remember what Pharaoh means? The guy that lives in the big house. All right. Unto him, and thus he has said, Jehovah, Elohim of the Hebrews. Unto when you keep on, you have refused. You have violently refused. To humble yourself in the front of my face. You send away, you shoot away. That word is in P.L. stem there. It means you do it now. You get rid of them out of here right now or I'm going to make you wish you had. 
my people. The word people here is my family. Familia. And they may serve me. They may voluntarily become my slaves. Voluntarily become my slaves. God doesn't make you serve Him. God, God allows you to serve Him by your own volition. In the New Testament and in the Old Testament, there are voices and modes in the language. When God calls you unto salvation, He calls you. You may come or you may not. When you serve Him, you may serve Him or you may not. We have a volition. God made man in His sovereign image. Man is sovereign. Angels are sovereign. Spirits are sovereign. They make up their own minds. God calls and God gives you the power and the grace to serve Him. But you have to be willing. Remember, God is showing them grace. He's showing them mercy from four to twelve months of mercy in all His terror time. The Mishnah and the Talmud both say that it is 12 months or a whole cycle of years that Moses stood before Pharaoh calling him to repentance. However long it was, 4 to 12 months, it was all a period of mercy. Because if you're refusing, if you're refusing to send away, to shoot away, and it means with force, my people, my family, Behold, I am about to bring tomorrow locust unto your boundary, outer bay, outer bay. These acridas polen, much walkers on tiptoes. These are the scourge of the land. These mean to devastate. These mean to uh, burn the land, the burners of the land. And they shall cover the eye of the land, the side of the whole land, you won't be able to see anything. They're going to cover it all. You will not be able to see the land. And not, he will be able to see the land. And he shall devour and eat down the remnant of which, what things that have escaped. The, all the things that the hail and, and the terrible flies and the frogs and the gnats didn't eat. I'm going to destroy much of it. And she left to you from the hail. She that was left to you from the hail. And uh, he, each one of these locusts, he shall eat every tree. Every tree in the land that sprouts to you from the meadows, from the pasture land. That's a hasaday. That hasaday means the field. It means the moisture land. It means the prairie land, that which, that which grows green. When the American people calls the great Dust Bowl disaster, the American Indians for thousands of years had created the Great Plains. Much of the American government still will not say that the Indians did that. They did it. They created They burned off the trees. And they gave a pasture land that went four feet deep in buffalo grass. And they drove those buffalo from the extremities of that great plains that was created by the American Indian. And down there, you could dig down into this ground in the terrible, worst, hottest time of the year, and you could go down and you could get wet soil underneath it. It was like an insulator that held the moisture. When they broke that up and planted wheat, they destroyed the whole ecology of the land and they caused the Dust Bowl, the greatest man-made disaster in the history of America that's ever been. The Indians created the Great Plains with thousands of years of manicuring it and burning it. They burned the underbrush and burned the trees off of it for hundreds and hundreds of years. When they first came to America, they said in the fall, fires were everywhere. The Indians burning the underbrush and burning the mesquite trees down and protecting the grass, always protecting the grass because that was their life's thing. That was the buffalo 
And they didn't have to calf a buffalo. The buffalo took care of themselves. They just went out and harvested the buffalo. And they drove them all the way back as far as New York. They planted great, great orchards of nut trees and fruit trees all the way back to the East Coast. Now let's look and see what it's talking about. We're talking about these moisture lands, these moist lands where the grass grows and where there's moisture underneath the grass. These are the meadows. And they shall be full. Your houses shall be full. And the houses of all of your slaves and the houses of all of the Mitzrayim of the Egyptians, which they have not seen your fathers or your father's fathers. No one has ever seen what's going to happen to you now. There have been plagues of locusts, but you're never going to see a plague of locusts like this. God accelerates and magnifies the locust plague. They know what a locust plague was. They already knew it. When, when God told uh, Pharaoh through Aaron, he knew what locust was. It wasn't some imaginary thing. It was something that had to come through the land. And it still darkens the sky, but this is going to be so much greater than anything they've ever seen before. And your fathers from the day of the coming into the earth, even until now, to this day. And he turned and he went away from Pharaoh. Aaron and Moses turned and they went away from Pharaoh. And they said, the slaves of Pharaoh, unto him, unto when... He shall keep on becoming this one to us. Why in the world? How long is he going to keep on coming to us? For a bait, for a trap. You've been baited, Pharaoh. Send them away. Send the men away. Send them away. Shoot them out of here. Shalah. P.L. Stem. Shoot them out. Get them out of here. Don't you know? Get them out of here. That they may serve Jehovah, their God. Yet not, do you know, do you keep on knowing that she shall perish, all of Egypt. You're going to cause all of Egypt to perish, Pharaoh. Now they're starting to rise up against their king, against the guy that lives in the big house. And they were brought back, Moses and Aaron, unto Pharaoh. And he said and kept on saying unto them, You go and you serve. Now, here is the compromise that they will not accept. You go and you serve Jehovah, your creator, Elohim, who the ones walking. Who and who the ones walking. You go and serve your creator, your God, and walk out. And go do it. And he said, Moses, with our young. Now he said, you only take the men. He said, with our young and with our old, we shall go. We shall walk. We shall keep on walking. With our sons and with our daughters and with our flocks and with our herds. And we shall walk because a feast of Jehovah to us. This is a feast of Jehovah to us, and we're going to walk out and we're going to do it. This festival gathering. The word is paner gere in Greek. And it, it's, it's used again in the New Testament in Hebrews 12, 22 and 23. And he said and kept on saying unto them, may become, he may become thus, Jehovah, with you. Just as I shall keep on sending away you and your little ones, you see, because evil before your face. I'm reading this from my literal translation of the Hebrew Bible. And not so or not thus you shall go, you shall walk now. Only the men. And serve Jehovah because it you ye seeking. And he drove them out with force. Now, 
from the face of Pharaoh. They were driven out with force, with violent force from the face of, the, of Pharaoh. I keep turning these pages. <coughs> we're in 10 and verse 12 now from the Hebrew Bible. And he said, Jehovah unto Moses, stretch out your hand over the land of Egypt. And locust, each one that he may go up upon the land. Now God's going to call these locusts here, each one of the locusts, one by one, he's going to call them. And you know what? Locusts sometimes got better sense than man. They came when he called them. Sometimes when man, call, man is called by God, he doesn't go, but these locusts went. He said in Egypt that each one of them may eat down all the vegetation in the land which is left by the hail. And he stretched out his hand, Moses, and the staff of God, which is the authority of God, over the land of Egypt. And Jehovah, he had driven an east wind, a wind toward the front is what it says, in the land, that's from the east. That's usually a hot, a hot, hot, hot wind. And all the day, and that all the night, till the break of day, and became this great wind from the east. And he had carried the locust, the akritas, the arave, the burners of the land, the devourers, the devastators. And he went up, the locusts, each one of them, it, God calls them individually. God calls mankind individually. He doesn't call families. People don't get saved by families. They get saved by individuals. And the locust upon all the land of Egypt. And he rested. These things rested. Each one of these rested in every border of Egypt. Exceedingly before the face, never he had become such locusts like these locusts. And afterwards and following, he shall keep on becoming in such matter. They shall keep on coming. And he covered extensively and violently all of the earth to where I could not see the earth. And she became dark. What? Cheshek. Dark. Darkness in the land. And each one of them kept on eating every vegetation of the land. And all the trees, haets, all the trees which he had left the hail. And not was left even a singular green thing, tree, or plant in the field, in the meadows, in all the land of Egypt. Yes. Yeah, yeah. When they talk about <coughs> where they covered the face of the whole earth, the whole earth. The whole land of Egypt. Except the Goshen. They weren't in Goshen. Yeah. They were not in Goshen. God is making the division between his people and Pharaoh now. Now he's showing Pharaoh without a doubt that I don't like you. That I'm going to protect my people from the plagues, but you're going to get all of it and then some. Now Pharaoh says, I've missed the mark again. And he hurried Pharaoh to call Moses and to Aaron. And he said, I have missed the mark. Astokio like in Romans 3.23, for all have gone astray and have missed the mark. And he said, I have missed the mark against Jehovah, your God, and against you all. And now, please beg to forgive my sin only this time. And beg and pray. Keep on begging and praying to Jehovah, your God, that he may take away from me only the death of this. Now, this is a little stumbly here in Hebrew.
translation, but I, there's things in there that you don't see in English. And he went out and kept on going out from Pharaoh. And he prayed unto Jehovah. And he changed Jehovah the wind from the waters, strong exceedingly, and he carried the locust. And he thrust as a unit now, thrust the lo locust out as a unit, as a complete unit, in the Sea of Reeds, not in the Red Sea, but in the Sea of Reeds. The, the Red Sea come from the word, or from the uh, Septuagint, not from the Hebrew Bible. And the Sea of Reeds, not was he left, a single solitary locust in all of the boundaries of Egypt. All the boundaries of Egypt. Verse number 20. And he made strong Jehovah the heart of Pharaoh, made it hard. And not he sent away the sons of Israel. Now, 1021, we have another plague. Now, God, this is a plague of darkness, skotia, skotia sophon in Greek. Now, the gods of Ra, Amun Ra, Atem, Atum, Horus, Thoth, the Egyptian moon god, these are all sun gods, Ra, Amun Ra, Atem, Atum, and Horus, these are all sun gods. And then we have Thoth, the Egyptian moon god, the, the light of the night. And it became dark in Egypt at midday. And apparently, there is light in the Jewish Hebrew homes. 10, 21 through 29. Here is the last of the penal plagues. The last of the penal plagues. We have the miracle of the rods the staffs where God had Moses throw down his symbol of authority and fought against the symbol of darkness, which is Lucifer. That was a contest. The first miracle is not listed as a miracle or a plague, but as a miracle, a contest between God and Satan. And God, even though there was two to one odds against God with those Leviathans, God, the Leviathan, ate them all. We looked at all of these plagues now. Now we come back to the last one. The last penal plague. Penal means correction. To correct. The, there were Egyptians that were believing. There were Egyptians that were following. God said, take your cattle. Get them out of the hail. I don't want to kill them. And some of the Egyptians put, the, put them in their homes. They didn't leave any, they didn't let anybody go out in their fields that believed. The ones that went out didn't come back. The ones that left their cattle out, the cattle didn't come back. Now we have Darkness. 1021 through 1029. And said and kept on saying Jehovah unto Moses, Stretch out your hand unto the heavens, that he may become darkness. Shashek. Shashek. Genesis 1 and 2, 1 and 2 it said that there beca darkness became upon all the surface of the earth. It says in Genesis 1 and 1, Bar Sheath Bara Elohim Atz Hashemayim with hearts. It said, In one of the beginnings, in beginnings, plural, in one of the beginnings, God, He had created the heavens and the earth. And then it says, We Ruah, We Ruah, no, not We Ruah, but We Haaretz, and the earth, Hathya, she had become formless and void, Tuhu Avohu. And darkness was over the face of the earth because of Satan. The Satan is the god of darkness. Now, Ra, Amun Ra, Atam, Atum, and Horus are all Egyptian sun gods. They cannot stand against the god of the heaven, Jehovah the Creator. Thoth, the Egyptian moon god, is still dark at night, and there's no moon out. They're not going to see the moon. Now, some scientists say that, that they were called, all of these people were called temporary blindness, but there was no temporary blindness. They said that those biting gnats and those biting flies so swelled up their eyelids that they couldn't open their eyes. Now, this is a, this is a medical explanation of what happened here. But God said there was darkness in the land. didn't say they couldn't open their eyes. 
There's darkness in the land. And said Jehovah unto Moses, Stretch out your hands unto the heavens, that it may become Shashek, darkness, Gotia, Saphon, upon all the land of Mitzram, and that he may fall this darkness. He may face all of this darkness, Pharaoh. And he stretched out Moses his hand unto the heavens, and he became for darkness a gloom, Sophia Scotone, as it says. Scotone, Scotone, Sophone, Scotia Sophone, Shashek Afilah, a gloom, thick darkness, a darkness that you could cut with a knife in all the land of Egypt, three days. Darkness is a preview of coming attractions. Darkness is a sign of death. Darkness is a sign of death, and this is previews of coming attractions. Not they had seen each man, every man and his brother. Anything that arose like this from his place for three days, and to all the sons of Israel had become light in their dwelling places. God gave light in their dwelling place. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. They chose darkness rather than light. So God gave them plenty of it. Scotia, Sophon, thick darkness. And then he called Pharaoh unto Moses. And he said, you walk. You go serve. Go serve Jehovah. Only your flocks and your cattle you leave behind. Also, your little ones. Each one of the males keep on walking with you. And Moses said unto also you, you must keep on giving unto our land sacrifices and burnt offerings. And we will have prepared for Jehovah our God. And also, our livestock, they shall walk, each one of them, they shall walk with us. And not they shall keep on being left behind. Not a leaf, not a hoof, not a hoof shall be left behind. Because for from them, we will take something from the, from them we shall serve Jehovah, our God. And we, we shall keep on, not we shall keep on knowing what we shall keep on serving Jehovah with. Until we get there where we're going. And he kept on making Jehovah the heart of Pharaoh unwilling. Unwilling, not willing to let them go. And he said unto Pharaoh, Walk from upon me. Watch yourself. You will not see my face again. For in the day that you see my face, you shall die. That's what Pharaoh said to Moses and Aaron. And said Moses, just as you have spoken, not shall I again still see your face. This is the last time you're going to see me. And now 11 and verse 1. And said Jehovah unto Moses, still yet a plague, one more. This is a plague of divine judgment of death. This is capital punishment now. Capital punishment. Now we had darkness. Now this plague. This plague was a plague of judgment upon all the Egyptian gods, including Pharaoh himself. Pharaoh was a god of the Egyptians, remember. In Exodus 1, Pharaoh had killed the sons of Israel. Now the Lord is going to kill the firstborn of all the Egyptians. 
Exodus 11 and 12. Pharaoh will now let Israel go. He will later lose his army to death in the Sea of Reeds. Exodus 14, 4 through 31. Exodus 12, 29 through 36. Exodus 12, 29 through 36. Let's look at that. Now it came about at midnight that the Lord struck all the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of all the cattle. Now, the firstborn were considered the first fruits. The firstborn of Pharaoh would be the Pharaoh the next Pharaoh. And God keeps on handing out mercy. In all of this, he shows mercy. For four to twelve months, he has handled Pharaoh with gentleness and with mercy. And now is judgment. And yet there's still mercy in it. And he called for Moses Aaron at night, and he said, Rise up and get out from among my people, both you and your sons of Israel. And go and worship the Lord. As you have said, take both your flocks and your herds, as you have, have said, and go and bless me also. Now, during this period of time, if we go back to the 12th chapter. Now the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be the beginning of months for you. It is to be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, on the tenth of this month, they are each one to take a lamb for themselves according to their fathers. Now, this lamb is going to typify, is going to be a type of Christ. They haven't seen this. They wouldn't see it when Jesus came. Jesus took the Passover early with his church. So they take the last Passover, and he took the Passover dinner, which the Passover dinner was instituted in each Jewish family, each Hebrew family. God is going to take this feast from the families of the Jews and give it to his church. And he will institute from the table of the Passover, the house of the door, he will institute the Lord's Supper. He took Elijah's bread and Elijah's cup. When everything was done and Judas left, he took Elijah's bread and Elijah's cup. He took Elijah's bread and he broke it. And he said, take and eat this is my body that is broken and given for you. And then he took the cup and he said, This is my blood, the cup of the new covenant, which I'll make with you. And he said, I will not take this, this supper again with you, this feast again with you, until I come into my Father's kingdom. But do this in remembrance of me. And he sang the song and he went out. Every Jewish home would say, after they finished it, and after they raised the last toast to God, they say, Next year in Jerusalem. Jesus didn't say next year in Jerusalem. He said, I will not take it again with you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now if the household is too small, in verse number 4, for a lamb, then he and his neighbor nearest to his house are to take one according to the number of persons in them, according to what each man should eat, and you are to divide the lamb. Your lamb shall be unblemished, male, of one year old, the prime of his life. Jesus was in the prime of his life when he gave his life for us. And you may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. And they're supposed to inspect it and make sure there's no blemish in it at all. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And the evening was actually the next day. That's when the next day becomes. At 6 o'clock in the evening, that's tomorrow. The Jews, tomorrow, the first thing they did tomorrow was to eat and go to bed. That's a good way to start the day. Eat and go to bed. That's the way they started. Moreover, they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the, the header of the houses in which they eat. In other words, on both sides and the header. And by the way, if you make a mark down to that and like that, we see a cross, the cross of Jesus. And they shall eat the flesh of that same night, roasted with fire, and they shall eat it with unleavened bread. Unleavened bread means bread without sin. Jesus without, without sin. And with bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled. 
at all with water, but rather roasted with fire. Jesus withstood the fires of judgment for our stead. Both its head and its legs along with its entrails. And you shall not leave any of it over until morning. But whatever is left over in the morning you shall burn with fire. It typifies Jesus. And now you shall eat it in this manner with your, with your clothes on and your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand and shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will go through the land, not the death angel. Je Jehovah will go through the land. There is no death angel here. This is Jehovah himself. For I shall go through the land of Egypt on that night, and I will strike down all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am Jehovah. And the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. When I strike, no death angel here. Now this day will be a memorial to you, and you shall celebrate it as a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you are to celebrate it as a permanent ordinance, a permanent ordinance until when? Until the real thing happens. The real anti-time shall take place. Jesus will be on that cross. Jesus will die for us. Jesus will be buried for three days, and he will rise. But on the first day you shall remove the leaven from your houses, for whosoever eats anything leavened from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. And on the first day you shall have a holy assembly, and another holy assembly on the seventh day, and no work shall be done on them, except what must be eaten by every person that alone may be prepared for you. And you shall observe the Feast of Unleavened Dead for this very day that I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt, therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generations as a permanent ordinance. And in the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the twenty-first day of the month at evening. Seven days you shall be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eats what is leavened, that person shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he is an alien or a native of the land. Now, God puts everybody, he even puts the Gentiles in here, all the servants. And you shall not eat anything leavened in all your dwellings. You shall eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and take for yourselves lambs according to your families, and slay the Passover lambs. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood, which is in the basin, and apply some of the blood of the basin to the, door, to the headers, and to the side doorpost. And none of you shall go outside the door of his house until morning. There's safety in the home. There's death outside. For well, the Lord will pass through, the, through to smite the Egyptians. Je Jehovah will, not a death angel. And when he sees the blood on the header and on the doorpost, that sign like this of a cross, you shall observe this event as an ordinance for you and your children forever. It said, and you will not allow the destroyer to come in your houses. This destroying presence of Jesus. Destroying presence of Jesus. And it will come about that when you enter the land which the Lord will give you, and he has promised you that you shall serve this right, and it will come about when your children will say to you, what does this right mean to you? This is a question that they ask at all of the Sahasadors, that you shall say it is a Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the, house, over the houses of the sons of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians, but spared our homes, and the people bowed low and worshipped. Then the sons of Israel went and did just as the Lord had commanded, and Moses and Aaron, so they did. And now it came about at midnight that the Lord struck all, that Jehovah struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of the captive, who was in the dungeon. And a God again, God again spares Pharaoh. 
he spares Pharaoh. And all the firstborn of the cattle. And Pharaoh arose in the night, and he and all of his slaves. And all the Egyptians, there was a great cry in Egypt. There was no home where there was not someone dead. Death, death, death. Then he called for Moses and Aaron at night and said, Rise up and get out from among your people, both you and your sons of Israel, and get out of here and worship the Lord of you said. Take your flocks and your herds, as you have said, and go. And the Egyptians urged the people to send them out of the land in haste. What they said, We shall all be dead. So the people took their dough before it was leavened with their kneading bowls bound up in their clothes and on their shoulders. Now the sons of Israel had done according to the word of Moses. For they had requested from the Egyptians articles of silver and articles of gold. This is how they're going to build the tabernacle, by the way. And the Lord had given the people favor, grace, in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they let them have their request. And they plundered the Egyptians. Now they get paid finally for all of that 400 years of slavery. And now the sons of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Succoth, about 600,000 men on foot, aside from the children, and the mixed multitude, these were Egyptians, went up with them, along with flocks and herds and a very large number of livestock. And they baked the dough which they had brought out of Egypt into cakes of unleavened bread, for it had not become leavened since they were driven out of Egypt and could not delay nor had they prepared for any provisions for themselves. And now the time that the sons of Israel lived in Egypt was 430 years. And it came about at the end of 430 years to the very day that all of the armies of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. And it is to night to be deserved for the Lord for having brought them out from the land of Egypt. This night is for the Lord to be observed by all the sons of Israel throughout their generations. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. No foreigner is to be eat of it. But every man's slave purchased with money. After you have circumcised him, then he may eat of it. A pilgrim or a hired servant shall not eat of it. It is to be eaten in a single house, and you are not to bring forth of the flesh outside of the house, nor are you to break any bone of it. See, Jesus' bones were not broken on the cross of Calvary. They broke the other two men's legs so they'd suffocate to death on that cross so they'd be dead but Jesus was dead already and all the congregation of Israel to celebrate this but if a stranger pilgrims with you and celebrates the Passover to the Lord let all his males be circumcised and let them come near to celebrate it and he shall be like a native of the land but no uncircumcised person may eat of it and the same law shall apply to the native as to the stranger who's, who pilgrims among you then all the sons of Israel did so, and they did just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. And it came about on the same day that the Lord brought the sons of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. We'll finish right there this week. Thank you for attending these sermons on the miracles that are parables of divine action. God again gave nine penal plagues, one miracle showing that he was stronger than Lucifer in the very beginning with the rods, and then three sets of three penal miracles of action, parables of action. Finally, the death blow, the capital punishment. Those that did not believe died if you leave this world without knowing Christ, you are dead, 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 double dead. You cannot be saved after you leave this world. You'll become a believer one second after you die. But it's too late. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that if there's anyone out there tonight that listens to this or in the days to come for maybe years, that they will call upon you and repent of their sins and ask you to save their souls by Jesus' merits only. May he be the Lord of their lives and may you give them grace and give them life eternal. Forgive us for your failure. Help us to be vessels of honor for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.